Hello friends, welcome to the Tech Grant. Today we are starting a series on design principle and design pattern, like I promised you all, guys. So, as part of this series, first in this particular video, I will cover all the design principle that is required when you are designing your low-level system or your coding for your object to, in your object-oriented language. And next, I will go on the design pattern. So, as part of the design pattern, we will cover first the creational pattern, then structural, and then behavioral pattern. There will be multiple videos uh, depending on the type of the pattern that I am going to pick in one of the videos. So, if it's a small pattern, then I can club two patterns of similar type together and uh, so forth. Now, the language that I am going to use as part of this complete series to show the sample code will be Java. But the same principle and the pattern can be applied using any other object-oriented language. So, if you are not using Java, you are using suppose Python or some other object-oriented language and you have some trouble, then you can basically put it in the comment section and I will help you with that. But as far as the key concept or the core concept of understanding the principle and the patterns are concerned, it will be irrespective of the language that you are using as long as it's an object-oriented language. So, let's get started with the design principle first. So, the first question comes is, why do you use uh, or why do you apply a design principle and why do you use a design pattern? Why are they important? So, the reason why they are important is, is because uh, the design principle, these principles are developed based on experience of uh, some developer and uh, based on their experience, uh, many other developer have used the benefit of that experience and applied those principles and they got result. Now, these principles and patterns are time tested. So, if you apply it, you will come up with a code which are like very simple. Your classes will be really, really simple. The class that you design, it will be robust and extensible. What it means is that since the principle and the patterns have been time tested, so if, if you apply that as part or if you inherit that as part of your practice, your code or your class uh, that you are going to come up with, it will be, uh, it will have very less bug and you will avoid common bugs basically. So, the common bug that can come up if you don't follow the principle, all those things can be avoided. Now, same thing goes for the design pattern. Design pattern, it saves you from reinventing the wheel. What it means is that design pattern serves a very specific purpose. So, each pattern that that you are going to learn as part of this series each pattern uh, basically serves one kind of uh, one kind of uh, problem it solves one kind of problem for example if there is a creational pattern it deals with how you are creating your object if you have to create an object or if you have to create an object of the class that has to be one of its kind it means that throughout your application it there should be just one object for that class so, singleton pattern comes to rescue. So, you don't have to basically think over or ponder over uh, how do you do that. You just know that you have to create one bean. So, there is a pattern there. Just copy paste that code and apply it to, into your code. So, that is how other patterns are also there. So, we will learn about all those patterns in the subsequent video. So, let's uh, deep dive into the design principle first. So, the first principle that we are going to learn here is single responsibility principle. What single responsibility principle says that any class that you create, it should have just one responsibility. So, what it means is that the class, if you are creating a new class, so it should be restricted to just one responsibility. For example, if you are creating, a, so suppose you are creating a e-commerce website and you are dealing with so many components. And uh, suppose you created a class for your order management and as part of the order management, you want to do so many things. You want to fetch order, you want to show the order list or you want to uh, get the payment for a particular order. So, you should basically divide your class in such a way that uh, each class will, will be restricted to one responsibility. So, if there is an order management class, it should only deal with managing the life cycle of the order. It should not deal with uh, making a database connection. It should not deal with making payment, all those things. So, another way to understand single responsibility principle is that anytime if you have a class 
and if you are modifying that class for more than one reason it means you are breaking the single responsibility principle so let's look at an example now suppose you want to create an api and the api is uh, for your employee operations and uh, this api has uh, a simple method which gives you the employee list now does this piece of code adheres to single responsibility uh, principle or does it breaks the sim uh, single responsibility principle now that depends on what code you are going to write here if suppose you uh, if you are writing a code here and uh, you are making a database connection here and from the database you are fetching the list of employees so there are two ways you can do it first here itself make the connection here itself you make the connection to the database and fetch the employee list for each department now if you do that for the employee operation class there are two responsibility first responsibility is that it is going to get an employee list for you or suppose there is another method for adding employee so you are adding employee as part of the employee operation so it means that you are dealing with your employees that is the first responsibility second responsibility is that you are creating this connection here so uh, if there has to be any change in this connection code that is also the responsibility of employee operation class so if you have to suppose currently you are saving your uh, all the data in an rdbms tomorrow if you want to move from one rdbms to another rdbms suppose currently you are using oracle you want to move from oracle to mysql or to some no sql database so that requires change in this piece of code as well where you are creating the connection so it violates the single prin uh, responsibility principle now to fix this code what you can do is you can basically delegate the code of creating connection to some other class you can create a DAO layer or database access layer you can create a new class which will basically deal with only creating the connection and fetching something or dealing with the database record so tomorrow if you want to change your connection the responsibility of changing the connection lies with the other class which is making the connection whereas the responsibility of doing operation on the employee it lies with this particular class so that is how you can basically break this into two so this class can be broken down into two class one will be this class itself the other class can be an employee dao so it can be something like amp dao so what this dao will do is it will make the connection and it will fetch the record for you so this will adhere to your single responsibility principle so a common practice for creating your apis are you break down the the, the whole requirement into multiple part so suppose if you want uh, this api this api will be called from a client which is outside your application so if you want to change the tag so, so if you want to change this mapping you want to change this to slash employees slash uh, something else like a specific department so that is another one responsibility and if suppose there is uh, when you are getting this employee list and you want to do some changes in that employee list also for example if you want to basically increment the salary of uh, the top 10 employees and save it back to the database so here a common practice when you are creating an api is you divide your whole api into multiple part the first part is called the api or the controller the whole responsibility of the controller will be to basically to have an interaction with the client so that will be the single point of contact for the external world and what it will do is it will delegate the response to the other layers now the second layer here can be a service layer so in the service layer you can do all the operations like uh, incrementing the salary or playing around with or the modification which is related to the business so that can be done in the service layer and the third can be a DAO layer where you can basically make the database connection and uh, do the querying part and similarly you can have uh, basically model class and all those things you can uh, create as part of uh, your application so each of these will have their own responsibility and it will deal with only one and only one requirement 
so that is how you will break your apis now the next principle that we will talk about is open and closed principle what open and closed principle says is that your class should be open for extension but it should be closed for modification it sounds confusing but it's really simple what it means is that if suppose i want to add a new feature to my application i should not disturb my existing code because if i disturb my existing code i am basically breaking that code in production there is a chance that my change will break or it will basically cause a bug to the existing running code because the current code is running in production without any issue so if i add a new feature or if i modify the existing code to run so the existing feature which was running in production without any issue might have some bug because of this new change so your class should be such that you can extend that class so if you have a class a and you have a class b which so class b has a new feature so class b can extend class a but you should not go and modify class a itself to incorporate this new feature that is what this open and closed principle means and it's a very easy and straightforward principle so this principle makes you realize basically two things one is that you should not hard code anything in your application any literal work or configuration part should be delegated into a configuration class or a property file kind of thing where you hard code all these things but you should not hard code in your uh, in your class second thing is that your code should be really really modular so it should adhere to the single responsibility principle and it should be as modular as possible so you should not uh, think about writing a very big class of uh, thousand line or ten thousand line and uh, at the end of the day come up and refactor all those things so from when you're writing a new class you keep all these things in mind let's take an example of open closed principle suppose you want to come up with an ingestion framework what an ingestion framework is it's very simple you get data from outside ingest it in your database so you have a simple ingest class and it has a method called save data so what you did was you wrote your code here and as part of this save data code you have saved the data in an oracle database or any rdbms database for that instance so you are good till now now suppose tomorrow there is a requirement and uh, suppose the data that you are saving is related to credit cards so you are saving credit card data for your client and uh, later on there is a requirement that i want to do some analytics on top of this particular data of the credit card so that i can give a better offer to my client so now to do the analytics you, you want to save everything into hdfs and you want to run some jobs or some ml jobs there or you want to run some spark query there so you want to ingest this data in hdfs also <clears throat> but the code that you wrote here was to save it in the existing database that you have the rdbms so what you need to do you have to modify this code if you modify this code uh, of the existing code you are breaking the open and closed rule or the open and closed principle so a better way to do this and adhere to the open and closed principle is you create an interface and you create an interface called ingest with one method called save data and every time you have to ingest the data in a new sync or in, in, in a new database you implement this method and uh, you implement the save method and you write the concrete implementation for example now i have to save it in hdfs so i saved i wrote the concrete implementation here to save the data in the hdfs tomorrow i might need to save it in a csv or a excel file for reporting purpose to show it as a report so i can just implement this method and this principle forms like the backbone of a very common pattern it's called the strategy pattern we'll deal with that later down the series but uh, this is how the open and closed principle works and it saves you the effort of retesting the existing code so now suppose you have this interface ingest the one implementation for this is you are saving it into so you create a new class here you say that ingest in database or in your oracle database implement this particular method override this save data and write the code to save it in database now tomorrow you come and you want to ingest in hdfs also you are not going and touching the other class so here if you have a class for uh, 
db so you are not going and modifying anything in this particular class all you are doing is you are creating this new class so anything that was already tested before running fine in production it is not getting hampered by your new changes so that is how your code is safe and if any possible bug is introduced as introduced as part of this change it will be in this class only so that is why open and close principle is important the third principle that we will uh, look is liskov substitution principle it sounds little tough or tricky but it's really simple what it says that the object in a program should be replaceable with the instance of their subclass without changing the behavior of the program it seems really complicated here but let's look at from an example point of view so you have a class you say class a and you have a method called uh, xyz in that code which is doing some some business logic tomorrow you came and you created a new class you said it's class b and it is extending class a and again it is doing it is overriding the same xyz method and it is doing some work here now there is another class class c and this class is basically accepting this uh, input uh, input to the me method zq as instance of one of the class which is your class a now what lisco substitution principle says that the input that you pass so the parameter that you pass here it can be an object of class a or it can be an object of class b as well so why it can be an object of class b because class b is extending class a so since class b is extending or since class b is a subclass of class a it has all the property of class a plus it has some additional property of its own but since it has all the property of class a so if i pass an object of class b to this it should not break my whole program or it should not break my code now if i pass this object of class b to this particular method and it breaks my application it means that class b after extending class a is trying to modify the property of class a now class b can be created one year down the line after class a was created so class a was running in production uh, without any issue for one year now as soon as i introduced class b it introduced a bug because i have modified the feature of class a or some property of class a in class b and that is causing this particular bug which should not happen so overall when we are using design principle one thing that that we should have in mind is that any new code that i introduce it should not touch or it should not hamper the existing code it should not break the existing code that is why the this design principles are really 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 important so now let's see so this is what i told you that if b is object is used in place of a it should be fine if it is modifying the property of a then it can result in a possible bug an example of this is lies in the exceptions any object oriented language just think about it how the exception work when you are using inheritance so if you have inherited one exception into the other class uh, what is the hierarchy of it is it adhering liskov substitution principle it will second thing is that whenever you are overriding your class can you add a more restrict rule to the uh, to the subclass if you cannot Uh, can you i don't think so in java you cannot do it in python you cannot do it and why you cannot do it is if you are putting a stricter rule it means that you are basically playing around with the functionality of your super class and if you are playing around with the functionality of the super class you cannot basically override so if suppose this one is public i override it and i made this xyz as private here now can i pass object of b to this i cannot because this will not be able to access this xyz method this object from this particular class it will not be able to access this xyz method because i have changed the uh, property here so these two are like the classical example other than these two the most common example for uh, tutorial purpose that is used throughout online is rectangle and square but i think that better than that you can understand using these two principles and because these are used very commonly in your code 
so i hope this list scope substitution principle is ready clear if you have any doubt put it in the comment section i will clarify that the next one is interface segregation principle this is also a very very simple principle and you should definitely apply it why you have to apply it is because you don't want to create an interface and have unnecessary method in that particular interface so your interface should have only those method which its client is going to use so for example if you have uh, uh, if you have a vehicle interface here it can have multiple method so you have like start stop check engine check uh, rc validity for the vehicle check insurance for the vehicle so all these are relevant to the vehicle but are these relevant to the client which is going to call this interface that is the question to answer and if you are able to answer that question you are basically adhering to interface segregation principle so what it says is that it's okay to have multiple in, uh, it is okay to have multiple small interfaces which does a very specific job and it does not uh, basically work around and it does not force your client to do anything unnecessary this is what your interface segregation principle says now a silent benefit of using this is that uh, you are basically favoring composition over inheritance because uh, since you have multiple interfaces now you don't want to do implement 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 on multiple interfaces rather than you will compose that in your class and uh, that is one good thing so whenever you are using or you are using object oriented language you always follow this rule of favoring composition over inheritance wherever it is it can be done now let's take example of the interface segregation one step ahead so why this particular uh, interface is not good suppose i have two client the first client is a mechanic inspection the second client is police inspection so when mechanic will do the inspection it is not bothered about whether the rc of the vehicle is uh, valid or not whether the insurance is valid or not mechanic is not concerned with uh, all these things what the mechanic is concerned with is whether the vehicle is starting or not whether it is stopping or not whether the engine is working correctly or not when it comes to police inspection it does not matter to police that the vehicle is running or not running only thing that matters to police is that whether you have a valid rc or not your rc is the registration certificate and if you have a valid insurance or not so this is what matters to this police now if you have this one interface and this interface has to be implemented by both these guys then the mechanic has to unnecessarily override these two method the check rc validity and insurance and police has to override these three method and it does not need these three methods so it has to provide some null implementation or a default implementation to the these particular method which is wrong so what you can do is you can break this into two part and you have one interface vehicle for your start stop and engine this will be basically used by mechanic and another vehicle implementation or interface this can be in some separate module and in that module you can basically have this police inspection which will override this vehicle interface so that is what your interface segregation principle tells you that you should not have unnecessary method in any interface now the last one is dependency inversion and if you saw the pattern it's called solid which is your segregation your open close liskov then your last one which is interface segregation and finally the dependency inversion principle so it's the solid principle in abbreviation now this dependency inversion should not be confused with uh, your uh, dependency injection or inversion of control which is related to the bean if you are from spring frame uh, spring background so what dependency inversion principle means is that if you have multiple modules in your system one module which is on the higher side or the calling side basically it should not depend on the caller module or the lower module uh, mo lower modules implementation so this i will show you in accordance with the open and close principle only because these two are little related but the essence of the principle is different from each other 
so suppose you have two module module 1 and module 2 so module 1 if it is calling something from module 2 it should not be worried about the implementation that is going on in module 2 it should only be dependent on the abstraction part that okay this is the method that i have to call with this particular bean that's it i'm not bothered how that person is implementing inside so what the dependency inversion principle basically tells you is that you program to an interface and not to an implementation never have a hard coded implementation or a concrete implementation where you can have where, where you can use a structure and basically abstract everything as part of the interface so when you do this you will have a decoupled system and you should have a modular and decoupled system always you should have this so that uh, each modules are independent of each other and the probability of bug getting introduced from one module to another is minimal now i will take example of the ingestion framework again which i took uh, in open and closed in open and closed the essence was that i should have multiple implementation of this interface uh, save data so that uh, if i have to add a new feature so I can just implement this ingest into the new class and I can work around with it. Now from the dependency inversion point of view, what it means is suppose someone wants, so there is a third person here and they want to ingest their data into your application. So when they call your application, they should not be worried about how you are ingesting the data into an HDFS or an Oracle what they need to be worried about is i should have a correct bean or the correct object and i will using that object i will call the save data method now when i call that save data method using my object it should ingest it it should internally device whether it should be ingested in sdfs or in oracle or in some other database so that part or this this implementation of this interface or the multiple in implementation of this particular interface should not be exposed to the client it should not be that this client is making a direct call to this particular class create an object of this particular class and call this class directly that should not happen it should only deal with the abstract part which is the interface for me and it should not deal with the concrete implementation that is what the dependency inversion principle says so if you apply all these this solid principle or these five principles in your code, your code will be robust and extensible. So that is it for this particular video. I will come up uh, with the design pattern in the subsequent module or in the subsequent video. So the first design pattern or the uh, design pattern that I am going to talk about will be the creational and in that video I will talk about the singleton and the prototype uh, design pattern so watch out for that particular video that's it for this one see you in the next one do like this video if you have reached this far subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends thank you for watching techgrant bye